Hi guys, welcome to the Aeroponic Tower channel and today while I'm harvesting some tomatoes before this huge storm comes, I thought I would take the opportunity to share my story with you. A story on how we left the American dream. We sold everything we thought we had ever wanted in order to move into a camper, reset our minds, reset our lifestyle and ultimately move to Western North Carolina where we could pursue a simpler lifestyle. Thanks for listening to my story and coming along with me as I do this huge tomato harvest. And if you have a pursuit or a dream of living a simpler lifestyle, I pray that this inspires and helps you on your journey. Hey guys, come along with me while I do a huge tomato harvest. We have a big storm coming and I need to get all my ripe tomatoes off the towers before we get hit by heavy rains. You want to get your tomatoes off your towers before rain, otherwise they can split if they're already ripe. And the tomatoes just taste better if we collect them on warm, hot, sunny days versus after huge rainstorms. So I want to try and make sure I get everything that's fully ripe off the tower so I don't have any issues with splitting or losing any of that amazing tomato flavor. So let's get harvesting before this storm dumps on me. And while I harvest these tomatoes, I thought I would share a little bit about my story with you guys and how we ended up tower gardening and how we ended up in Western North Carolina, really trying to pursue a more simple life. And it goes back quite a few years after having children and becoming aware of GMOs and really wanting to create a healthy lifestyle for them. I just began to see the truth in the world and over the years just craved being able to grow our own food and live a simple life and, and the thing about that time period in my life when I was really craving that is that it wasn't super common amongst my community or just the background of my lifestyle or my husband's lifestyle these were all new concepts like growing your own food and living a simple life the world of blogging had begun and was pretty active and a lot of those ideas and a lot of the help I got came from reading blogs and following other moms who were on a similar journey but YouTube I can't even remember if YouTube was a thing back then definitely not like it is now where you would just go to YouTube to watch other people and be inspired and learn how to live a certain lifestyle and that's one of the reasons I like to share these videos with you guys because it is through watching other people live differently that I've been able to really change my mindset on a lot of things and feel equipped to handle living a different lifestyle and have the tools to do that but that wasn't the case at the time so I used the old-fashioned way Facebook was a, a big thing back then which isn't super old-fashioned but I used Facebook to connect with other people in my community who were growing food and a friend shared a video with me back to Eden gardening and I fell in love with that concept and I started chasing down trucks full of wood chips every chance I could and asking them to dump them on our property and I slowly turned my front yard which was a double lot in a suburban area in North Florida into a food forest and I started off trying to do back to Eden row gardening and then realized I wanted something a little bit different than that. I found a permaculture community on Facebook and really learned about setting up a food forest and just went to work converting that suburban front yard into something different. Now the problem with that decision is that we were in a suburban area and not everybody in suburbia wants their neighbors to have a food forest in their front yard and chickens in their front yard and we started to be told on by the city um, people would show up officials telling us we had to mow things down and that became really invasive on my privacy and something that really changed my heart and made me want to move away from that kind of lifestyle altogether. I found it just so hard to comprehend that a neighbor would tell on you and call the state on you 
because you're choosing to grow food in your front yard and have some chickens because they were upset your yard didn't look like a perfect manicured weed free lawn experience but we had always lived in Florida I was born and raised in Florida and my husband lived there and was uh, had his own business with some friends and it just didn't seem possible that we could leave that lifestyle so we put up a gigantic fence we put up the highest fence they would allow in the front yard which there were restrictions on that too which was also frustrating to know that I couldn't even put up the fence I wanted to create privacy and on the side of the house we had this gigantic fence and it was very expensive and it just started to change how I felt about living on that property. That house was our dream home. It was four acres. It was a traditional 3,000 square foot home. Absolutely gorgeous. We had invested so much time and money updating it and remodeling every chance we could. And it was on the river. It had this giant canal in the back. And that was the American dream, right? You get the big house and the big lawn and you live on the water and you have the expensive boat and the cars and all the things and you've made it. And there's so much pride wrapped up in the idea of being able to invite people over and have them you know, just ooh and ah at your amazing property and living on the water. And that's what was important to us at the time, even though growing our own food, growing my own food, and living a simpler lifestyle was really, really important on my heart. I was also just really caught up in that system of the American dream and having made it and being able to show off this beautiful property that we had obtained and that we got to live in. But what people didn't see about that property in our lifestyle is the drain that it had on us. It was expensive. It was a tremendous amount of work. It consumed our free time. I remember just doing one little tiny landscaping project around our driveway was a thousand dollar trip to Home Depot or Lowe's. I don't remember which one because everything about that property was big and everything was four times the amount of work that our property now is and everything was four times more expensive than our property is now because it just was bigger and everything was harder there and we got to this place where it was really interesting my husband got into minimalism and started to really simplify his life and the things he had in his life and Somehow that spread to me and I started to do the same and I started with the closet and then eventually found my way in our kitchen. We had this giant kitchen that needed to be updated and I knew we'd never be able to update it because it was so big it would just be you know, a ridiculous amount of money that we weren't going to have in any foreseeable future that I could see. And I went in that kitchen and I just started to clean things out a little bit. And somehow that ended up with me throwing away about 90% of everything we owned in that kitchen. So we had all of these cabinets, upper cabinets, bottom cabinets, just this huge space. And when you would open the cabinets, they would be bare. There was nothing in them. I actually went out and bought all new dishes and bowls and cups and bought exactly what we needed and put them in one cabinet. And that was pretty much the only cabinet that had anything in it at this point. And we just kind of fell into this place where the Lord was leading us to live a simpler life, even in our giant space that was not simple at all. And it was through that experience that I think we just started to let go mentally and emotionally to things. And, you know, I can look back now and it was the Lord preparing us for the journey he was going to take us on. But there came a day when we were discussing moving and we just kept going back to if we gave up this house that was our dream and has everything in it that we've ever wanted, then what are we trading it for if we don't love living in Florida? You know, why are we staying here if we don't love it here? And so one day my husband called and said, I have an idea. Why don't we just sell everything, move into a camper, and we'll figure it out later? Because we couldn't figure out what the answer was, where we were at on our own. But we knew we wanted out of that lifestyle. We knew we wanted out of the burden of that home and the expenses of that home. And so that's what we did. We 
about with the process of selling everything we own. And if you want to know how little your stuff actually means, <laughs> go ahead and try to sell it all and move. We sold a few things and we had garage sales where we begged people to take things. And then we ended up having to actually pay trucks to come haul off stuff. And that was a real eye-opening experience at how little value stuff really has. It took us about six months of non-stop work to get rid of everything in that home. And eventually we sold that home, bought the camper, and that you'll see in some of the backgrounds of these videos moved into the camper and took off on the road and it was such a great experience learning how to live in a smaller space and just reconnect as a family we met some of our closest friends in the world and some of my children's closest friends while we were on the road and we just let go of all those ideals that we had had for so long about what makes a life a satisfying life and through the work I was doing at the time and my husband was doing at the time, we ended up in Kentucky and here in Western North Carolina for a pretty significant amount of time, a couple of months. And it was during that time that I just felt like we were being called to settle down and find a place here. And we went on a hunt and we looked at two houses. The second house we looked at was this little small cabin up in the mountain that had checked every box we had dreamt about as far as living a simple life in the mountains. It was a small cabin. It was simple. We were surrounded by nature, so we weren't trying to maintain lawns that needed a lot of work and money and time. Uh, we didn't have neighbors who were going to complain if we decided to grow food in our front yard. And so we made an offer. It was accepted. The previous owners were amazing, and we settled into this small cabin life here in Western North Carolina. And we have not once looked back with any regret. We of course miss friends and family who we left behind, but handing over the material things and letting go of the idea that we are accomplished or we have made it based on the things that we own and where we live was just so freeing. And because of that, we've been able to just live a simpler life, find more contentment in the small things. Instead of 3,000 square feet, we learned to live in 350 square feet. And when we upgraded from 350 square feet to 1,150, wow, did it feel like we lived in a mansion over here in this little cabin. And it's just been an amazing experience of stepping out in faith and seeing the beauty that can come from doing that and here in our cabin we now live a simple life we try to keep things small and easy and it's brought so much joy to be able to spend time on things like growing some of our own food and building relationships with people in our small community and I've carried that concept over into how I grow food I used to do everything big. If I had chickens, I was going to have 30. I had as many as 75 chickens at once. Instead of one coop, I had four chicken coops. And I've really stepped back from that thinking and simplified all of our systems for how we grow food. I still keep chickens, for example, but I only keep a small flock that I know I can maintain well, that feeds our family and gives us a few eggs to share. And instead of making huge, massive gardens, I tried that when we got here actually to grow as much food as possible in the ground and it required a lot of inputs, compost and work and wood chips and all of the things to re-establish those gardens and I just decided I didn't want that kind of work and maintenance anymore. That's how I got into the tower gardens. I wanted to be able to have an easier way to grow food that was more affordable, that really fit into our small and simple footprint lifestyle that we've created here. And that is where we're at right now. We grow a ton of food in a really small space. And I like to say that my role is to help people to find simple, sustainable systems to grow food in any space. And that's what we're doing. We have raised beds for the things that won't grow on the towers like garlic and carrots and some of those deep root vegetables. 
the majority of our grocery store food comes from the tower gardens. Our fruit, I have landscaped into our property, so we have fruit trees instead of landscaping trees, and we grow blueberries instead of beautiful landscaping bushes. And I know that everyone ha that has this desire can't just sell everything they own and move it to a camper and do what we did. But one thing I do want to say is that the journey into living a simple life started many years before we ended up in this location where living that simple life was completely fulfilled. I gave up the idea of a manicured lawn and a beautifully landscaped lawn and I turned it into a food force to grow our own food. And when I didn't even know the reality of living in a small cabin in the mountains was possible, I took all of those things in my kitchen that were causing clutter in my mind and in my heart and in my day and just taking up unnecessary time and space in my life and I got rid of them all and I was able to simplify where we were and then through that experience and over a significant amount of time we ended up where we are today so if you are looking to live a simpler life or you want to grow some of your own food just be encouraged that you can do that you can do that in any place you are at whether it's big or small if it's in the perfect location or if you're still dreaming of that perfect location you can take the steps today to start growing some of your own food if you want information about tower gardens reach out to me i'd love to help you with that journey if you don't want to do tower gardens you can do raised beds you can grow in containers there are ways to move into a simpler lifestyle where you are in charge of some of your food and the way you live even without changing your circumstances thanks for listening to my story guys i have been wanting to share it for a while and i really appreciate you hanging in there with me and just letting me share the experiences that we've had and i hope it inspires and encourages you and i will see you guys on the next video there's a shark in there